Anyone interested in vintage sewing machines will know what's coming next after seeing one of these military styled cases. An Elna Grasshopper. The Grasshopper isn't an official name, but a nickname adopted shortly after the machine was released, and for good reason. The color and shape make it obvious. These first Elnas didn't really have a model number, though in time they became known as the Model 1. Manufactured in Switzerland from 1940 to 1952, when they were superseded by the Elna Supramatic, between 65,000 and half a million were released. I tend to think the higher number is more realistic, because on average, you can find dozens of these for sale on eBay. It takes a lot of machines being put into circulation to have so many available 70 years later. Their greatest claim to fame was that they were the first portable free arm sewing machine. You remove the case and you have a free arm. This beat out the Singer Featherweight 222K by 14 years. Online references state that these can be dated by looking at the first digit of the serial number, which is the year of manufacture. The problem is that since these were made as early as 1940, a 0, 1, or 2 in this location could be 1940, 41, and 42, or 1950, 51, and 52. The answer is to rotate this cover plate up and out of the way and look down here at the very bottom of the opening where the date is stamped. In this case, May of 1950. To thread, bring it from the spool through this pigtail, down and around the tensioner, up to the take-up arm, and then down to this pigtail. From the last pigtail, bring it down through this thread guide, and then to the needle, threading it from right to left. Place the bobbin in the holder so that the thread is coming off counterclockwise. Slide the thread over so it catches under that finger and pull it over until it snaps down there. Even after reconditioning and oiling, the motors on these Elnas are so weak that they may have problems starting. Rotating the main wheel by hand so that the needle is all the way down helps the machine get a running start on the first stitch. I mentioned earlier that there are plenty of these machines for sale online. That's the good news for anyone wanting to buy one. The bad news is that up to one quarter of all these machines are incomplete. The most common missing parts are the bottom half of the folding knee controller, the green storage box that goes here which fits the power cord, and the power cord itself. If you want to avoid a lot of disappointment after unpacking, I recommend you make sure these are included with any machine you buy, particularly the power cord. Keep them clean and oiled and these well-made machines should provide enjoyable vintage sewing for decades. And because of their unique styling, they're a great machine for display. Thanks for watching.